Donald Trump has put us in a horrible situation. We do have enormous income inequality. And the one thing I agree on is we can make massive cuts in the $1.6 trillion in tax loopholes out there, and I would be going about eliminating Donald Trump's tax cuts for the wealthy. That was, uh, well, that was former President, uh, Vice President Joe Biden, in case you didn't know him or recognize him. Weighing in on the Trump tax cuts last night in the second round of the first Democratic presidential debate. That's like the second revision on first quarter GDP, GDP. or something like that. Join us now uh, with the big takeaways. Uh, former Massachusetts uh, Congressman Barney Frank, he served as House Financial Services Committee Chairman, and he's also a CNBC contributor. Uh, and former India, uh, Indiana Congressman David McIntosh, he's now president of the Club for Growth. Uh, Congressman, uh, thanks for Congressmen, thanks uh, for joining us. And uh, great to be with you. To call uh, Congressman Frank chairman all the time. I think that's uh, yeah. Probably the rule is uh, you you get called whatever you peaked at for the rest of your life. Right? I exactly. <laughs> we don't want to. Uh, you, could, you got much more to do still. Uh, they, 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 this is, you're not on the downward slide. Uh, neither one of, uh, of you gentlemen. So uh, whoever wants to start, I mean, uh, Congressman, do you think that the economy is, is going to be the winning issue, um, the Trump economy, for, for the Democrats? Um, no, I don't think it'll be the winning issue. Uh, what's striking is that it won't be the winning issue, I think, for Mr. Trump. It's an unusual situation in which the... Uh, the economy appears to be less of an issue than than it has been. Right, but um, it sounds like you're conceding that the economy would is pretty good, but personal issues or whatever problems you well, have with actually, Trump could, could outweigh what is a good economy. That's that's probably that's, that's not. Although you know, we will argue, and I firmly believe that the uh, and this is part of Trump's problem. I don't right. think the the economy lasts. I think it is clearer and clearer that it was the uh, uber Keynesian approach of a huge. Right. deficit that supercharged the economy. And by right. the way, among those who appears to be convinced that the economy is not in all that good shape is Donald Trump, because this assault on the Fed. Right. Uh, and by the way, I've always I've never agreed that you couldn't criticize the Fed. I thought Greenspan was over venerated. But uh, what Trump is saying is, hey, the economy is a little shakier maybe than it looks. And I think that's what we will be able to talk about. But the other piece, and I think the, it is the microeconomic issues that will be more well, important, gonna, beginning with health care. I wonder if it, because you do need to, to look, I think, at, like you said, maybe go take a deeper dive in the economy. Because I'm, uh, David, I'm wondering whether independence, I know Democrats, uh, this is income inequality is, we've had Frank Luntz on, he's going to be on again, and they've never been more... Um, uh, sort of energized by that argument. But I'm just wondering if independents, and certainly I know Republicans, when we hear, you know, we don't want a food fight, we want to try and put food on, a, on Americans' table. And we, we just, things are so bad right now. I, it just, with where unemployment is uh, for, for right. overall and for minorities and, and, you know, GDP or any of the measures you look at, the stock market, any of the measures you look at to keep hammering how bad the economy is just seems disingenuous to me, to right. independence. No, I, and I think, uh, and what's more, Joe, I, I think the, what the debate showed is almost all of the Democrats up there will hand Trump an opportunity to make the economy an issue because they've become so radical about their programs on the New Green Deal, huge tax increases that would stifle the job creation that is helping middle America, and people there see it. Um, and what Trump can say is they're going to take that all away from you. And so, essentially, you, you might not like my style, but I'm helping you a lot, and it'll get a lot worse for you and your kids if you go to one of these more radical Democrats. That's what I think will happen in the fall. Last night, what we saw was more an inter-party fight on more of the social issues, um, in particular, Kamala Harris's attack on Joe Biden on the busing issue. And we've been polling the Democrat primary voters, and more than the economy, they, they care a great deal about uh, Biden's history on busing and things like that. So she took advantage of it and really kind of launched herself as a credible candidate on that issue. Interestingly, she also said, I'm going to be for a tax cut, which set her apart from the Democrats. So she, she both advanced in the primary 
and laid the ground for the fall that she might be the one that could be credible on economic issues. I wonder if she can, I, that's what I was thinking, that, 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 that uh, Kamala Harris might throw a bone to, to centrists because if, if she gets in a position where she looks like she's, you know, really starting to, yep. uh, to poll well, she could bring in some people. Because I'm not sure raising your hand for free health care or, or health coverage for, for illegals, I don't know what that would poll nationally. No. You, or, uh, or, Frank, you... I don't think it's that bad an issue. What part of the problem here is a practical one. Do you want a lot of sick people walking around? Do you want people with contagious diseases walking around? But if we, if around? we have I mean, no they, borders, you know, and, and, you well, know if you combine, no if you combine you're, everything, you're, uh, yes, where nobody, everyone's going to want to come here. But for, we're not combining everything. As you, kind of. Nobody's for open borders, but maybe a handful of people. I think you saw this in what Dave said. Um, there is a, there's a, an alliance between many Republicans and conservatives and Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez to greatly magnify her influence. In fact, as far as the Green New Deal is concerned, and you have Nancy Pelosi as the dominant Democrat, fortunately, in my view, by the time this election season comes up, if now, it will be clear that the Green New Deal was nowhere. It hadn't happened. The Democrats yeah, are focusing but, on health care. But Barney, and, I'm, um, I'm sorry, David, David, everyone, David wait, no, let's but, but, David, almost all the candidates said they're for it. Excuse me, are we going to get interrupting or are we going to give each other a chance? Well, uh, don't go right ahead. Thank you. The fact is that they are not going to be enacting the Green New Deal. I do agree. The Medicare for All, abolishing private insurance is a problem. I don't think in the end there's going to be a nominee who supports that. And part of it is, and you, David said he's been polling, the Democratic voters in the primary appear to be much more realistic to the frustration of some of, on the other side uh, than this. And I think what you will see the Democrats talking about is, first of all, and this is the biggest single one, infrastructure, which has great appeal, which Trump said he was for, disappeared with the magnitude of the tax cut. And one of the things I think the Democrats will be talking about is taking some of the money back from the upper end in the tax cut and putting it into infrastructure. So uh, what we're seeing, I would say, is, is the Democrat Party shifting from where Barney was, which is let's think about these real issues on the economy and infrastructure, to a much more progressive. They're, they're trying to nail down their progressive base in these primaries. But in doing so, most of the candidates on the stage last night and the night before embraced the new Green Deal. Right. Even Joe Biden came very close to it with his own version of Did of you hear when Kamala Harris was asked, do you, do you think they have to pay for all of this? She used this, this example, which I really hate which is, look, look, the Republicans uh, didn't seem to care when they raised taxes. We shouldn't care either, which I also hate. No, on, on the other not end. Not raise taxes when they, when they, when they, they lower taxes. The, yeah. the, well, I, first of all, I think it is clear that I, I think there are about 107 people in the country who were genuinely concerned about the deficit over everything. For everybody else, it's a sticky use to beat your opponents. But the, the key, I think, is this. I want to go back on the Green New Deal. Yes, presidential candidates say things because, and we know that, and everybody knows, the primary electorates on both sides are more ideologically committed than the general electorate. Now, I don't think they'll be quite as blatant as uh, the Etch-a-Sketch guy from Mitt Romney who said, oh, this is all going to be Etch-a-Sketched after the primary. But I, look at the Congress, look at Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic majority. You will not see anything very radical enacted. They'll be pushing for infrastructure. Yeah. They'll be pushing for health care. And by a year from now, the threat of the Green New Deal isn't going to be credible because Democrats, having controlled the House for all that time, yeah. won't have advanced it. But you, I think that etch sketch was right next to the binder full of women, right? Remember yes, that? Yes, we'll Romney, did, he, he was a genius, uh, yeah. wasn't he, for someone that... Um, so you're still, uh, you still think it's going to be a Biden... I, I think that is like you. You I think, think so, David? Uh, um, I think he has some weaknesses that Harris pointed out with um, potentially could lose the support he has among the Democratic Biden black Harris. voters. You think she'd take a, a veep spot, Barney? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The last person who turned down the vice presidency was Hiram Johnson in 1920 when he said he wasn't going to be Warren Harding's vice president and therefore lost a chance to be president. I just read uh, Andrew Yang has accepted <laughs> secretary of commerce already, yeah. apparently. So that, <laughs> I read that. Yeah, That's what he's no. running for. Yeah, huh? no. Anyway, now uh, we know. Gentlemen, thank, thank you, uh, yeah. Congressman.